Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Stitcher. My name is Megan. You can find me on Instagram is Megan underscore Babauta underscore on Ravelry as Mama Made VM. You can email me at the Seattle Stitcher at gmail.com. Any of my other social media links, I'll try to remember to put in the down bar below. Um, if you can't find them, email me and I'll send you whatever it is that you were looking for. So, as I say, you are all very, very welcome here. I usually like to hop right in and start with the starts, but surprisingly, I actually don't have any starts from the past two weeks. I have a start though that I forgot to show you guys the last time I recorded. So Bridget in the museum stitcher, I'll pop a picture here of her, uh, either her YouTube or her Instagram. Both of them are the museum stitcher, but her Floss tube anniversary, her first year of floss tube was the beginning of this month and her two year stitching anniversary. So we decided to stitch a pattern together. Um, herself and the girlies and I, we are all stitching this pattern, which is black work butterfly. I'll pop a picture here. I'm stitching mine on a 32 count weathered stone by Atomic Ranch with these beautiful Gloriana flosses. These are silks. So Gloriana Silks, and this is the colorway Pacific Blue Dark. I will say, I think that these are very old. <laughs> Reason I say that is that I recently came across some Glorianas that are newer, and they're in like twisted hanks now. They're not on floss drops like this. Uh, so I'm pretty sure these are these are quite old. But I will say my LNS, I think that she has a lot of older stock of product. Um, because I've seen the colorways of like the things I've purchased from her versus the colorways of like what they are now. And they're quite different. That is not a complaint though. I really love my LNS. It's amazing. So, um, you know, I'm lucky to even have one, but all that to say it could be different now, like Pacific dark blue now could be much different than this. So I just wanted to preface by, say, by saying that, but the Gloriana's are absolutely amazing. My, uh, thread needle street, she had four Hanks, skeins of it and I bought all four while I was there. So I did start this like I said a few weeks ago now but here is my progress and I'm switching it two over two on this Atomic Ranch fabric. It's just lovely. It's so pretty. I just oh, I love it so much. And the weathered stone is such a good neutral. It's like it's not really warm toned but it's not a super super cool tone. It's just a good neutral. I think you can, I wish you guys could see the modeling better. Let me see if I can get you a good, you can kind of see it there. It almost just looks like the wrinkles in the fabric, but it's not, it's actually the modeling itself is just lovely. So it's a really good neutral. I had actually started my Rose Quaker on this and realized that although this was sold to me as a 40 count, it is actually a 32. <laughs> so there was no way that my Rose Quaker was gonna fit on the fat quarter that I had, but luckily this tiny little pattern will. So I just started that a couple weeks ago now, a few weeks ago now, to be honest, and I haven't picked it back up, but I like having these smaller monochromatic pieces. Um, Bridget actually brought hers to StitchCon and hers is beautiful. She's using some uh, Almond M&M's silk flosses. She'd gotten like a 100 gram hank of it and it's absolutely lovely. So I have this inside of one of these little small project bags. This is actually one that I got at StitchCon from Hello from Liz Matthews. So thank you to Liz because I have already, already used it. It works great for that project. Uh, the next project I have is also in a small project bag. These are the ones that I personally order off of Amazon. I love this size for these smaller pamphlet stitches, the ones that I have the actual paper chart to. So this is Jardine Privé's Lady Halloween. And I've been working on her for quite some time now. I think I started this probably not in October. I probably started it off, <laughs> off season because I just love Halloween. And I'm stitching mine two over two on 28 count, count Winter Moon which is this Weigart fabric I got off of one, two, three stitch. And I'm so sorry, I don't have any before photos this uh, this episode. Usually I'm really good about taking them, but for some reason it, I just spaced completely on taking all of my before photos. So I don't have any, but here is where I got to. So I didn't do very much stitching. I think I just did honestly a very like a handful of stitches. I just went down here into her hand and the beginning of like the staff that she holds and that is all I got done. But I don't know, I just kind of felt like pulling it out and working on it and looking at it and 
even if it was only a few stitches, I always show you guys what I've touched during the past couple weeks, and this was one of the things. And you know, it's like some stitches are better than none. I get like a lot of, I get like a lot of questions and comments about like how I get stuff done or like that I've gotten so much done. And sometimes it's like this, you know, sometimes I only get three stitches in a thumb <laughs> or a staff and that's all I get for the night. Cause you know, I'm a mom and I'm a wife and I work and you know, it's it, like life happens and that's okay. And so I guess I just want, I show you guys everything cause I want to show that like, it's okay to only get a few stitches done because a few stitches a day adds up over the weeks. It adds up over the months and eventually you'll have a beautiful finished piece that you'll be so proud of. And I really am proud of this one. I love the way it's looking. It's probably one of my favorite like a fabric floss combos, just the 310 on this winter moon linen is so good the two over two looks amazing and it like i said just dmc 310 it's fabulous i've done all my back stitching with one strand except for um i think the wings of this little i don't know if it's a fly or a bee i did do two strands there so yeah i just love it so much it's so cute and the needle minder on this one is a mad for minders needle minder although i did go through all of my projects this last weekend and i took off all of my needle minders because <laughs> i realized so i had run out of needle minders and i did buy some when i was at stitchcon but i thought to myself like why am i keeping a needle minder on every single whip i have because i have like i don't know 20 25 27 whips <laughs> <laughs> and they all don't need their own individual needle minders. So I went ahead and just pulled all my needle minders off of pieces. And now my board, here I have it right here, as a matter of fact, my board is like completely full almost, you know, like there's some space, but I have mad reminder needle minders. I have some stitch con needle minders. I have some ones that were gifted to me. Alexis gave me this one. These are from Amazon, like just so many. <laughs> <laughs> There's a one, two, three stitch needle minder. So, um, very highly recommend if you are like me and you have a lot of whips, there's no need to keep those needle minders on all those projects. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. Why I was continuously buying more and more and more. I would say like the normal person probably only needs like 10 to 15 needle minders that you can rotate in all of your projects. <laughs> and here I am like an abundance of them, totally unnecessary. So I don't know why I didn't think of that, but in case you're like me and you also didn't think about it, go through your whips, take all that stuff off. <laughs> the next project I have is actually my Kathy Barracks piece. Um, this is Good Intentions, but you know what? I don't think I actually worked on this one. I just wanted to mention it because someone had asked about what colors I was using for the words, but I have lost the message. So I had actually, <laughs> I would planned to talk about it so that I could let that person know that it was obsidian, which is a Leo and, uh, or sorry, Roxy Floss Co. Floss. It was the only over dye that I used for the entire bunch. I rekitted mine up with DMCs, but I figured out who it was that sent me the message because I posted it in my Instagram story. And so I don't really have a reason to pull this one out besides to say, how cute is this? I love it. Um, shout out to Maddie of Kitty Stitch, which by the way, happy birthday, girl. I absolutely love you. You're amazing but she charted this little cat here, which is so cute. I think I'm gonna extend his tail, make it a little bit longer so he looks more like my little Binksy. You guys know my cat Binks. I saved him from the dealership I work at. I found him there and I did look for his owners for a very long time, but I never found them. So anywho, <laughs> I ended up resolving this one, but I had it in my stack. So I just opened it and had a little surprise. The next one, again, in an Amazon bag. This is one of the larger Amazon bags. And as you can see, this is a standard piece of printer paper. And you can see there's quite a bit of extra space on each side. So you definitely, you don't need to get this large of a size, but I, I like them. They work just great for me. This is White Winter Moth. It's also a Kathy Barrick pattern. So apparently I was having a Kathy Barrick kick after StitchCon. <laughs> <laughs> and this one I actually started with Cam the Stitcher. She has a YouTube channel as well as a uh, Instagram underneath that same name. So I'll link her below. She's fabulous. I love her so much. I call her my queen of conversions. She's so good at doing colorway conversions. It's fabulous. But we started this one together January 13th. January 13th of 2023 was the first Friday the 13th of the new year. So it was like 1323. I don't know. I, kinda, I thought it was cute. So we started this together and anyone could join in. Um, we did like a hashtag, which I'll put on the screen with the info, but 
any any moth project you wanted to start and Cam has been pulling hers out every 13th of the month and I saw hers on her last floss tube and it looked so good that it really made me want to pull mine out and I decided to pull it out and get one motif completely finished. That was my goal. So I chose a small one because I didn't have very much stitching time, but um, I did I did complete it. So I'm stitching this on 36 count honey by the Stitch Me. This was a fabric of the month. Um, I'm no longer in the fabric of the month. Absolutely love Brandy of the Stitch Me. I couldn't say enough good things about the fabric, to be honest. It's just that I need larger cuts. So here is my progress. And I'm so sorry, I don't actually have any before pictures, um, but I did get this whole daffodil motif done. And then my needle minder on this one is actually a needle minder that I got at StitchCon. So shout out to the person who was passing out those like Scrabble blocks. I absolutely love that. Genius idea. It's so cute. But yeah, here's my progress. I feel like it's so cute. It just looks so good. And I love the fabric. And I'm going to have plenty of the fabric left. I think I'm going to have half of the fat quarter. So I'll have plenty to do like a small Halloween project. My cat's being crazy. <laughs> so I'll have plenty to do like a small Halloween project or just something, you know, something else on the, on the fabric, which I love. So for this, I did kit it up with the DMCs. So here are all the DMCs, which was much to my surprise, an array of like teals, which how perfect is this ombre though? Wow, it's so good. Like amazing. She really knows what she's doing with the colors, man. But yeah, when I saw the photo, I thought that this was black and grays. I had no idea that this was actually teals. So it could just be the conversion from the MPIs to the DMCs, but I really, really love it. And I love the way it's popping against my like super warm honey fabric. Um, the gold is, is a little bit more hidden, of course, but it definitely shows up when you, you're up close. So I really like it. It's looking good. I'm just slowly chipping away at the moth because that's a lot of B5200, <laughs> but I'm stitching as I go. And like I said, I got my goal of getting one motif done. I think I'm going to do like Cam and try to pull this out once a month. Um, I'll try to aim towards the 13th when we first started the salve, but it's really not that big of a project. So I should be much further along than I am. I just think I, I haven't really touched enough of my whips lately and I'm going to do a whip parade soon. I promise a mid-year whip parade and hopefully I'll kind of like, you know, seeing them, touching them, get a little bit more excited about working on some of them. So there's my next whip. Pretty sure after that one, I pulled out this one. This is my birthday start from this year. So April, April 28th is my birthday. And I decided to go ahead and start Plum Street Sampler's Shepherd Song. I just love this pattern. I feel like it is so me. Um, if you've been watching for any period of time, you'll know that I absolutely adore sheep and knitting and wool. And this is totally a me pattern. The black house in the middle is so moody and amazing. And I love everything about this. <laughs> so I did do an upper left-hand corner start. I'm up over here. And I started mine on 32 count Nessie by Picture This Plus. I ordered up my cut from Hollis Hands Creates. You guys know I love me some Christine. She's fabulous. And like I said, I don't have any before pictures, so I really do apologize for that. But I did get a little bit of stitching done in this one. Let me stand up and get closer so you guys can see. Okay, so last time you guys saw this one, I had some of this corner motif done, like some of the border. And I extended that, I think like for like two more lengths of floss, maybe in just one more length of floss. I completely finished filling in the flower except for the very middle stitches. And I did some of the um, foliage that's around the rows here. So I just absolutely love this. It's so cute. I feel like it's turning out so nice on the Nessie as well. The only alteration I've made so far is this little crown was supposed to be stitched in... I think one of these silver colors, here's my floss ring. What color? I think this color. So it was supposed to be stitched in like this silvery color. And I just felt like that might fade a little bit too much into the blue fabric. So I decided to go ahead and go with the gold. And honestly, I feel like the gold looks super cute. And it's also a little bit more my style anyways. I'm more of a gold than I am a silver person. So I love this. It is just so cute and I highly recommend Nessie by Picture This Plus. It's just such a beautiful fabric 
here's a pretty good representation of the color right here, kind of like where my hand is, the modeling here and everything. It's just lovely. And it's kind of one of those fabrics that's a good neutral, uh, even though it's blue and it's, I mean, it's bright. It's, it's one of those colors that everything shows up on. I and mean, even a lot of shades of blue will show up on this kind of modeled blue fabric. So I feel like blues and purples are a safe bet if you're trying to like stash some fabrics that you could pull for kind of anything, but you also want them to be fun fabrics. I feel like blues and purples are the way to go. So um, that was my birthday start this year. It was my golden birthday. I turned 28 on the 28th and in the States, we call that a golden birthday. Look, I know that in other countries, it's called different things. <laughs> but I live in the States. So my golden birthday start was a Plum Street sampler and I have it in this very special bag, which was gifted to me and sewn for me by Alexis from Alexis underscore my amazing world, who has a floss tube channel, which I will link below. She is just amazing. My next and actually last whip that I worked on for the past couple weeks is a drawn thread. And I love these patterns, let me tell you. So a drawn thread welcome Halloween. I love these little welcome charts. They're so cute. Um, honestly, I wanna stitch the autumn one, even though I know having <laughs> having this one, I don't need the autumn one, but I love it so much. Um, they're both just adorable. Um, pretty much any of these are adorable. So this is charted with dinky dyes and I think DMCs, but I went ahead and just decided to pull all DMCs for it. So I did a full conversion just from stash. And I do have one like fancy floss of a DMC, which is 4130. It's like a variegated orangey burnt red sort of color. And I'm gonna use that for the pumpkin. And I've already used it a couple of times as well, but here's my conversion. If you're interested in my conversion, again, shoot me an email. If you message me on Instagram, there's a chance that I might not be able to get back to you quick enough because I'll be at work. And then by the end of the day, my inbox, I might've already lost your message. So that's why I say to shoot me an email instead, but I did get the W done. So I got the W done here for the welcome. And I started the next little motif, which is the ghost. Um, I do need to add, I think there's like one or two more bats here, but I am going to like, I'm going to redo and fiddle with the back stitching for the bats, uh, wings. Cause I think I did a really bad job. <laughs> He's just looking a little funky there. He's looking a little lopsided. But it is so cute. I do think that the called for was the, one of the dinky dyes and it has like a greenish variegated color, but I went ahead and just used all the orange for the hat and the contrast color. And I really like that. It matches the little collar of the cat. And I love the way this is looking. It's so good. And I'm stitching this two over two on 36 count natural linen, which is a wide art base, I believe, because it does have the orange threading on the, like the end piece here. So yeah, super cute. I'll have plenty of this fabric left as well because it's literally just the welcome across the top. And because I did go up in count to 36, I'm also gonna have a smaller piece overall. I do think though that I might have to get a custom frame for this one, which kind of sucks because it's nothing fancy, but oh, you know what? I could do a flat fold. That's a possibility, but I do love the way it's framed here. I think that's so cute. So yeah, I really like this project. It's still in my little tiny Q snap because it's the one I've been working on at night, but I've actually been knitting a lot the past couple of weeks, to be honest. That is my last whip though. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a picture here of the winner of my giveaway for my last video. So if you watched to the end of my last video, you would have seen that I snuck in a little giveaway of the Scary Sampler. This was a um, Nashville Needleworker, what is that, Expo? <laughs> so last year, this was one of the patterns that was released and I just absolutely adored it. So I wanted to give away a copy and you guys know I absolutely love scary Halloween stuff. Halloween is my favorite holiday. It's my daughter's favorite holiday. It's my mom's favorite holiday. <laughs> we love Halloween. It's like where we go all out for decorating and stuff like that. That and I'm, I'm a big decorator for Christmas. I love those two, those two holidays. But anywho, all that to say, um, here's the, my screenshot, my screen grab of the winner of the scary sampler. Thank you so much to all of you who entered. And if you happen to be the person right here that won, please email me. Uh, I'll need your first and last name and a good mailing address for you. And I'll get that off to you in the mail 
probably next week here because I usually visit the post office while I'm at work. So <laughs> it's right down the road for my job. At least one of our post offices, not my post office, but a post office. <laughs> So I'll get that mailed off to you as soon as you get back to me. And I'm going to actually move from then to my knitting. So if all you stuck around for was the cross stitching, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you guys. And I honestly do consider you guys my friends. You're like my friends and family. I just, I adore you all. Thank you for like spending your time with me and also for, you know, teaching me, helping me learn my cross stitching and just being part of my life. I feel very, very blessed and grateful. And yeah, this whole thing has been wild to me. Like <laughs> the, having the channel, going to StitchCon and just everything, you know, it's so, so overwhelming. The amount, uh, the amount of love that I feel from this community is just amazing. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And if you're interested, then stick around for some knitting, maybe some book talk if I remember, but um, I'm going to move into my knitting. All right, outfit change. I had to take my jacket off. I was just getting too hot in here. But um, thank you to everyone who sticks around to listen to my knitting chat. So I decided I wanted to kind of get a head start on my Christmas knitting. And my Christmas knitting this year is just gonna be for my daughter, Amira. I have a daughter who is five years old. And uh, she pretty much almost every year I've knit her a little doll of some kind. She has a really large advent calendar that has like these large pockets that we fill every day. And one of the things that I wanted to knit her this year was a little stuffed animal, which I've done in previous years, but I wanted to do something a little bit more interactive this year. So here is the, the stuffed animal that I chose. This is a Ravelry pattern. I don't remember the name of it, so I'll have it on the screen here, but it's just the cutest little bunny. And I have really just, kind of just gung-ho for this bunny. I Last weekend, I knit all of this. <laughs> so I knit the little ears separate, attached them to the head, which I knit. I did do the, the embroidery, I believe it would be called, for the little eyes and the nose and the mouth. I do think I'm gonna redo that though, just cause I'm not, I'm not super happy with the way it looks. I think that maybe the black is a little bit too dark for how light gray I've chose to knit the bunny. And I got the little tummy and the body done and I did fill it with just some basic polyfill. So the body, I'm holding two strands of a fingering weight wool. This is a actually indie dyed yarn from a company called, well, it's not a company, it's actually just one person. And they are called Yoshi and Lucy. I will link their Etsy below if they still have an Etsy. If not an Etsy, I'll try to find an actual website. But um, when we went to Hank in Cincinnati for StitchCon, they also sold some Yoshi and Lucy. So I really love this dyer. Their yarns are amazing. And I'm, I just, I've had this in stash forever and I'm not really one to gravitate towards these really light, light grays. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna use it. I know it's a little pricey to use for a kid's toy, but I'm gonna use it. <laughs> and so I, like I said, got the head done, got the little ears done and got the body done. And then for the, the bloomers portion of the, <laughs> the lower body, I did one strand of the gray held with one strand of just some stash yarn. I don't know what this is. I've had it in stash forever. It's a pure white fingering weight wool. You can see how thin it is. It's very fine and it's very, very soft and smooth. So, so I could tell it was a super wash. It had a nylon blend and I thought that'll hold up really nicely. The legs, I will also knit holding one strand of the white and one strand of the gray together. So it looks like little tights and the arms, I'll do the two strands of gray. So they'll be gray like the rest of the bunny. So essentially the first day of Advent, she'll have her little bunny. And then the next day is interspersed with like some candies and other little goodies I'll include shoes and accessories and little dresses and sweaters and this pattern designer actually has like entire lines of dresses for these little stuffies that they make so they're very small i think they're nine inches in total but it is so cute and yeah if i sit down this weekend which i know i won't have the time this weekend but if i sit down next weekend per se and i i i should be able to knit both the legs and the arms and she'll be done so that's a cute one. Um, I just kind of have a basket filled with the yarns that I've been, like I pulled to do kind of like a color theme for, for the little bunny. So I've got some mohairs, I've got the gray, I've got some lighter blushy, and I've got pink and just all sorts of kind of girly, you know, 
little girl colors, like colors my daughter would love. She likes the soft mohairs and stuff, but yeah, I'm really excited about that. I think it's gonna be super cute in her advent calendar. Moving from there, this is actually my only acquisition over the past couple weeks, and this is some yarn that I purchased to knit a sweater for actually another floss tubers granddaughter so as you guys probably know janet jabber <laughs> janet herself she actually had her granddaughter with her one of the days she was at stitch con and um her daughter was there as well so it was her daughter her daughter's husband and then uh, her granddaughter who was absolutely precious so i saw her and um i met janet's daughter and was like you know please let me knit your your little sweet baby a sweater and so i sent a bunch of pictures of different purples because I asked like what's your color scheme you know and she'd shown me a little eggplant toy so I took a bunch of pictures when I got back and it was kind of a week after stitch con so I was able to relax and breathe a little and um, I sent a bunch of pictures over to Janet she sent them to her daughter her daughter picked this beautiful plum red purple color it's beautiful isn't it oh, such a good color honestly I need something out of this but this is hunting uh Huntington yeah, Huntington by Valley Yarns, which is from Webs, and I believe this is their in-house brand, but it's a joy to work with, and I casted on the Itty Bitty Pretty sweater. I'll pop a picture here. This is actually one of my favorite sweaters I ever knit for my own daughter. I knit her this in a cream color. Oh, goodness. I dropped a bunch of stitches. I dropped stitches in lace. Whew. Don't worry, I fixed it. <laughs> no one ever has to know. So anyways, my favorite sweater I ever knit for my daughter was this sweater. And you know what? I put it on her so much as a little kid <laughs> that it felted. And then I think I like accidentally washed it in the washing machine because I had knit mine in an 100% wool. Luckily though, the Huntington is a nylon. Yeah. So it's 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. So this should be machine washable. I would lay it out flat to dry though. I'll of course send a little note in the, in the box that I sent on over to him. But anywho, um, <laughs> as I fixed my stitches, here is where I got to, which this is totally up my alley. Cause it's like a dark, <laughs> a dark color scheme so I absolutely love it and I just can't put it down the little short row shaping for the back of the neck for a baby sweater is too freaking cute it's just adorable and the lace panel in the center how cute is that and of course when I block it out which blocking if you didn't know is a knitting term you kind of soak your whole knit work in water and then you lay it out flat to dry some people pin out their work whatever it may be I just lay mine flat to dry I'm not too picky about it but uh yeah it's coming along great it looks so adorable it is so soft look at these little tiny raglan increases it's a yarn it's actually a yarn over for the increases on each side every other row so every other row there's yarn over yarn over knit one stitch yarn over and that's how they do the increases i knit my yarn overs through the back loop though so that they're not so large but you can kind of see here this striping right here there's these little tiny eyelets and so it kind of matches the eyelets that are on the lace detailing um, I'm very excited about this little sweater. It's so cute. I only have a few more inches on the body and I'll be casting off and then knitting the sleeves. I'd say probably like four more inches on the body, which is only four more repeats of the lace, which it is an eight row repeat for the lace chart, but it's very easy for me personally. Um, but I've been knitting for a very long time. So <laughs> this is just really enjoyable. I absolutely love it. And I love the yarn. Highly recommend this yarn if you're a knitter and you are looking for something that is good for babies because it's very, very, very soft and it is washable. I love making washable things for moms because I mean, listen, I'm a mom too. I would not like, I would hate a person if they sent me a hundred percent wool sweater for a baby. Like how am I supposed to get spit up milk out of this? You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I've already divided for the sleeves. So I've got the little sleeve stitches on hold and I'll knit the little tiny sleeves and it'll be done. So probably only a couple more weeks worth of knitting and I'll be sending this off to Janet, but it's so cute. And I just, let me tell you guys, Janet Jabber is such such a nice lady. Um, it's funny actually, when I first got into cross stitching, my aunt, she was giving me recommendations for channels to watch and Janet Jabber was one of them. And she just loves her videos. And so the second I met her, it was like, it's like, you know her, 
she is so so kind and just has like the a personality that lights up the room so um it was just such a pleasure meeting you janet and i can't wait to see your little grandbaby in, in a sweater that i knit um moving from there i as you guys know have been knitting on a sweater from this book scandinavian sweaters and I do kind of plan to knit my way through these sweaters over the next probably about 10 years. It's going to take me quite some time because I think there's 25 sweaters in here. So it's, it's a hefty one. Not that I want to knit all of them, but I want to knit a lot of them. So I did get the body completely done, which you guys saw, I think last video I showed it. Um, and then I did cut the armholes as well. I can't remember if I showed that or not. I just sew up with the machine, just machine stitch around and I completely cut the arm and now I have holes so I can uh, attach my sleeves once they are knit and I did start a sleeve. I think I mentioned last week that I'd start or last video that I started a sleeve but I didn't actually show it so I only have a few rows to show but I did get all of my ribbing done which is only like four rows and I started the color work repeat so that is going great. I have my little cakes of yarn in this acrylic bucket that I got off of Amazon. But yeah, I just kind of take the yarn off the cones because this is Holst Super Soft, which is a coned yarn. So here are the cones of yarn. And this one is Scott's Pine, which is just this beautiful brown. It's not too warm and not too cool tone in my opinion. And then this is just white, I believe. Yeah, bleached white. I felt like this was a really good like neutral colorway because I want to knit up a bunch of sweaters in this whole super soft to pass down in my family. So eventually these will go to my daughter. For my daughter, they'll go to whoever and they'll continue being passed down. The thing is that although these wools are very rustic, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you it's the softest thing ever. I personally can wear this next to skin. Like I could just wear, you know, my undergarments under it and it's not going to be an issue for my skin. But I will say if you even have the slightest, like, sensory problems, like a little tag on the back of your, um, your neckline would bother you. I would avoid whole super soft cause it's not super soft. <laughs> like knitting with this, I was, wow. It's so soft. It's baby skin soft. You know what I mean? Like you could put that on a baby. This on the other hand, it's rustic, but it's the kind of rustic that it'll get softer the more it's worn. It'll get softer the more it's washed and it will last a hundred years. I'm not even kidding. It will last a lot. You know, it'll last my lifetime and then some. So that's really what I was looking for because I've decided, especially with my knitting, that I really want more heirloom pieces and less, almost less like, I don't want to say less stylish, but I just, I would like more heirloom pieces because um, these are still stylish in my opinion, but they're that timeless kind of Scandinavian classic. And I mean, this is what it's going to look like on me, quite oversized and comfy and lovely, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. So I do have another knitting project. I just need to go and grab it, and then you guys will be on your way. Oh, okay. All right, my last knitting project is actually one that I started for StitchCon, and this is a pattern I just completely made up myself. So this is a little t-shirt that I'm currently knitting. This is... Also in Indie Dyer, I believe her, I believe her brand is Cabin in the Woods. There were some motorcycles that went by and they were so loud. Okay, so I believe the brand is Cabin in the Woods. I will double check and I'll put it on the screen if that is incorrect, but I balled this up by hand so I don't have the tag for it any longer. So like I said, I made this pattern up off the top of my head, so I don't really have any way to describe it or show you guys a final picture, but essentially this is a bottom up sweater that I whip stitched the brim and <laughs> it's very cropped. So it's only going to be to like belly button height because I want to wear it with skirts, like high lined skirts. And I'm right now working the back panel. So I have split, this is the full length of the body and I split the stitches in half. So the math that I did for the sweater was I knew roughly my gauge for a fingering weight wool and I knew how much positive ease I wanted. And I also understood knowing that this is a super wash, it is gonna grow from where I, when, when I soak it. So I think I cast it on like 270, 280 stitches anyways, and I divided the front and the back evenly, 
and I just needed it to where the front panel could be divided into two evenly even sections again because I'm going to do a v-neck so I'll have two panels that I knit flat for the front and the back panel I knit in one large piece flat as well so I have already started knitting the back panel flat with all the stitches still on one needle so it's kind of hard to show but essentially I have split here for the back panel. And so now I have knit a few inches of the back panel, as you can see. So here's the front panel. And then here, all of this is the new panel for the back. And I'll just continue knitting that until I have a depth that I'm happy with. Um, I do need to go ahead and put this, this full front section. As you can see, I need to put all these stitches on a different holder so that I can a little bit easier knit the back piece, but it's going great. Um, so far, I do wish that I alternated skeins. I think you guys can see here. So here onward was one skein, <laughs> and then here up was the second skein, which is a lot lighter blue and a lot more white. But I think you can kind of tell from the very, very bottom when I first started the first skein, it was also a lot more white, but yeah, it'll get there. And I whip stitched the broom together. So here you can see where I've taken the, the first stitch I cast it on and I've knit it together with a, with about, I think I knit four inches. So this is two inches even, and I knit it together with a stitch so that it's created this double thickness of knitting on the bottom. So it just kind of weighs down the knitting and makes sure that the t-shirt isn't just flying and flapping all over, but it also prevents my stitches from rolling. I'm going to do a V-neck. So there's not going to be any kind of no kind of border or hem or anything like it's going to be like this like you know when you have a t-shirt on and there's a little piece of fabric that's just stitched together it's going to be like that not for the neckline though the neckline is just going to be a clean crisp line no folded over stitches i'll probably do like a a little either crocheted on or some kind of little binding at the i'll figure it out when i get there but the sleeve i'm probably going to make them about this length and it will be a drop shoulder and I will do one inch of the, the little binding, the whip stitch that I did on the, the lower half so that they kind of match. Um, so far, I don't know if I'm gonna wear this, honestly, so I might be giving it to one of my girlfriends who I know it'll fit, but um, it's just been fun to knit and I really, really love the, the yarn. The yarn is so pretty and I do feel like this little cropped look is really cute with those flowy skirts that are really in style and they're also really comfortable to wear, those long flowy skirts. So I like this look and I like the idea. Um, it's just a fun, simple knit. It's what I've been bringing to work and knitting at the desk when I don't have any clients. So yeah, that is my last knitting project. I did finish another, uh, another like little handkerchief and it is somewhere in my room. <laughs> I finished a cream colored one. It's literally like this shade of creamy white and it's super cute. I just need to weave in the ends. So I'll show that in my finished objects next time I film, but that is everything. I don't think I have anything else to share. I hope I'm hoping I remembered everything this time. So uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful next couple of weeks. I will catch you next time. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.